Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. I just wanted to take a second to honor all the moms that are here in service and online and say Happy Mother's Day. Whether you're a biological mom, an adoptive mom, or a mom who stepped up and stepped into that role because of love, we see you today. Now, this is also fun. Many of you may not know this, but today, Family Church is 41 years old. <laughs> 41 years ago, our guest speaker, stepped out in faith and answered the call of God on her life when her and her husband led the first service of what was then called Christian Faith Fellowship Family Church. Since then, not only did she help push Family Church forward into what you guys see today, but she led a thriving children's ministry all the while raising two kids, one of which is my very sexy husband. <laughs> but more than that, at least for me, it was through her example that I realized not only the power of prayer, but how important it was for me to have my own relationship with Jesus Christ when I entered their family at 21. She took me in as her own, and I've gotten to call her mom ever since. So please help me to welcome to the stage Miss Lynn McKelvey. Well, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day, moms, grandmoms, great grandmoms, and any great greats in here. It's an honor to be here this morning. I appreciate the opportunity. My husband did not come with me this, mor this weekend. Um, my mom lives with us now, and so he said he would stay and take care of her. And told me to go have a great Mother's Day, so I appreciate that. It's a blessing. So I've got a question for you this morning. I'm going to share a Bible story with you, which, because I was a children's pastor here at the church for um, a couple years, um, I always told Bible stories. So, of course, that's my kind of way that I preach. So I've got one for you this morning. But before I tell you the story, I want to ask you a question. How many of you remember trying to find a seat somewhere. You ever remember going into school with the lunch tray and trying to find a seat in the, in the uh, cafeteria? And remember that? Anybody try to find a seat on a bus and everybody scooches over and looks at you like, ain't no way you're sitting here. How about on the subway? I mean, trying to find a seat. It's not always comfortable to try to find a seat, but how many remember ever go into a wedding and you walk up to the table when you first go into the reception and there's those little cards and you scan over it and you see a card that has your name on it with a seat number and you're like okay I'm at table seven okay all right I got this how about you ever remember those of you that are a little bit older going to the movies and having to find a seat now of course you can order them online I know and you can get all that stuff done online pick your seat and everything but there was a time a real time when you had to walk in, and if it was a really good show and a good time, guess where you had to sit? Up front, where your neck was breaking and it was so big and you're trying to see the screen. But the story I have to, for you today is about a young man who found a seat at the table. That's the title of our message. Can you say that with me? A seat at the table. If you have your Bibles this morning or your phone, 2 Samuel 9, verse 1. 2 Samuel 9, verse 1. The story is about David. How many remember David? He was a little boy that killed a giant. If you're new to the things of God, the Bible story sometimes you kind of don't pick up all the pieces because you don't know all the characters in the story. But David was this young man that was anointed as a young boy to be king of Israel someday. And he went out one day and he killed this giant named Goliath. 
So our story begins here about David. He is now king of Israel, and he finds himself in a position where he needs to find the previous king's son, son, the grandson of the king. The story, if we backtrack just a little bit, there was a king named King David, and he had a son, Jonathan. And in one day, King, David, uh, king Saul and Jonathan were both killed. And in those days, if a king was killed by the enemy, the entire family was looked for so that they could execute them. <clears throat> you had to get rid of the whole family so that nobody could rise up and say, wait a minute, I belong as the next person in line for the kingdom. And so the story proceeds like this. King Saul had a son, Jonathan, and Jonathan had a son named Mephibosheth. Say that with me because it's an amazing name. Mephibosheth. <laughs> Say it three times. Mephibosheth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't name your kid that. It's a horrible, like it's hard to say. But this kid, Mephibosheth, was just a child. We don't really know how old he was, but he was a child when his dad and his grandfather were killed. And so the story starts to say this, that the nanny or the nurse picks him up in her arms to run away so that she can securely uh, put this kid in safety. And when she's running with him, she drops him. How many ever dropped your kid? Come on, be honest. Raise your hand. Come on, moms. He's still alive, yeah. I dropped my son a few times. Now, one time I dropped my daughter. Well, I kind of threw her. Do you guys remember those snow suits that the kids' arms would stick straight out and they, they were just like stuck? Oh, I was going out the back door of the house. I had little baby Kathy in my arms. And when I did, I stepped wrong off the back step, and I started to go down. And as I was going down, I was like, oh, my God, isn't it amazing? And you can do it in slow motion. Oh. And I took her, and I threw her over in the snow. She landed very gently. As I went down, snapped my ankle, crack, fell onto the sidewalk, I was out. Now, I don't know how long I was out, but I was out. When I finally came to, I see my daughter over in the snow, in excruciating pain. I somehow grab her. I crawl. Now, you got to picture this. Crawl, like the army crawl. Back into the house as I'm agonizing because I dropped my kid. But the story of Mephibosheth is even sadder than that because when the nurse dropped him, the Bible says he became lame in both feet. And he never recovered. They never got better. I don't know what it means to be lame in both feet in this Bible story. What happened? We don't know. It doesn't really say. So Mephibosheth is now taken by the nurse. She drops him. He's injured. He becomes disabled. And she takes him and she hides him in a town called Lodabar. Now, Lodabar is a town that is poverty-stricken. They don't have any pasture. They don't grow anything. Nothing's prosperous there. And now the king's grandson is living in poverty. Now we're going to pick up the story right here in 2 Samuel. And David said, King David now, is there yet anyone left in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house named Ziba. And he said, I think Jonathan's son Mephibosheth is still alive. And the king says, go get him. How does that strike you? Just think, this kid has been in hiding. The Bible kind of shares with us a, a, a time frame, probably over seven years. He's been in hiding. And now all of a sudden, the king has called for you. The king now shows up, not him, but his army or his servants, whatever, show up at your house in this poverty-stricken community looking for you. And they take him back to the palace. Now, I don't know, but I'm thinking that maybe his heart was beating fast. He's afraid, like, what's going to happen to me? What's going on? This is crazy. Who is this guy? I don't even know King David. And all these emotions are running through him. And they bring him to King David, and they set him down before him. Now, I want you to look at verse 9. 
And David says to him that you are going to eat bread at my table continually. Then he goes on to say in verse 10, you're going to eat bread always at my table. Verse 11, you shall eat bread at my table and be one of the king's sons. Watch the next one, verse 11. So Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem and ate continually at the king's table. In one day, poverty-stricken, crippled, poor, destitute Mephibosheth went from there to the palace. That same story as us today. One day, the king came looking for us. One day, we felt inside of us a need to make Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives. One day, something happened, something shifted, something changed in us, and we're like, I need that. I need that in my life. And you said, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. And that minute, that very moment, you got a seat at the table. That very moment... You got to sit at the table of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That very moment, you went from destitute poverty to everything that God has. You became a a child of the Most High God. Everything that God has belongs to us. Everything. In one moment, in one instant, in one day. If you have your Bibles in Ephesians, it says this. Ephesians 2.6. God has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We now, every one of us, have a seat at the table. You know what's interesting about this? Is that you don't have to be a Bible scholar. You don't have to have gone to Bible college. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to have uh, been a Christian for 15 years. The minute you ask Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life, you get a seat at the table. How many remember when you were a kid, especially you large Hispanic families, having to sit at the kids' table? And you'd hear the conversations going on at the big table, the adult table, and you'd be like, what, what are they laughing about? What are, what are they fighting about? I've been around Miss Cindy's family a little bit, and whoo, very, very different than, <laughs> than our family was. Her father, Mr. Sharana, who I love dearly, he has a very loud, booming voice. So it always sounds like they're mad. And the volume just goes up and up and, whoa, whoa, what's happening here, all right? So so I can imagine what your families were like and what your big gatherings with all your aunts and uncles, and it must have been some kind of an ordeal, all right? But when you're sitting at that kid's table, you're wondering what's happening over there. Guess what? We don't sit at the kiddie table anymore. We don't ever, ever have to sit at the kiddie table. There's no time frame. It says, okay, when you grow up spiritually, when you become this, you get, no, we don't. The minute we get born again, I get to sit at that table. Amen? I get to sit there. Now, there's something I want to share with you this morning about sitting at that table. When you sit at the king's table, you have the opportunity of inside information. You're going to hear things that God's saying. You're going to hear things that the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And what your job is to do is to lean in. So what I want us to do this morning is just lean forward just a little bit. Just like you're trying to hear me a little bit better. Lean in. And that's what you're going to do with with God. Now that you're born again, now that you're on your, those of you that have been saved for a while, you still got to practice this. Lean in and start to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. The day and the time we're living in is like none other. And I know every generation says this. Everyone, oh, it's never been like this before. But this is, this is, this is not a good right now. There's a lot of stuff that our young people are dealing with that we never dreamed in a million years that we'd ever have to deal with. And you as moms and dads and grandparents, lean in. How can I help them? What can I do? Not, not, not down them. Not badmouth them, not yell at them, not continually like correct them over and over. Lean in, Holy Spirit, what do I do? How do I help them? How do I minister to them? Lean in. 
I'll tell you a couple of times. I have hundreds of them, but we don't have time for them all. But a couple of times when my husband and I leaned in. One morning, my husband got up, and there was this online banking many years ago called ING. Anybody remember ING Bank? And one morning, my husband gets up. I'm having my coffee. And my husband, he was the pastor of this church. He wasn't like one of those that he was supernatural, but he wasn't weird with his supernatural. He didn't come out, Lynn, thus saith the Lord. And he didn't act like that. He'd come out and he goes, you know what? I'm going to check out that ING bank. I'm like, what? It's 8 in the morning. What are you talking about checking out a bank? Thank you. Checking out a bank in the morning. So he comes out, and he goes, I'm going to check it out. So he goes online, he checks it out. That day was the last day that you could put money and transfer it into a CD and make crazy interest. He's like, I'm going to do it. Like, okay. At that point, I had learned to trust him. I said, okay. So he takes the money, puts it in there. I'm telling you, I won't tell you how much because you'd be mad. We made an enormous amount of money on that one thing. Because somehow, somewhere, at some point during from the night we went to bed to the next morning, somehow he leaned in. Somehow he had something about getting a hold of ING and investing some money. Are you listening? There was a time when I was a young mom. We didn't have any money. How many ever been in that place? And I stayed home, so I didn't work anymore. I was taking care of my, my daughter at the time. My son wasn't born. And I wanted to get a bicycle, a tricycle for my daughter. And I was just learning this kind of stuff. And I was driving down the street, and I see a sign that says yard sale. Now, at that time, I had never been to a yard sale. And I was like, yard sale. And I felt this lean in, go to the yard sale, turn. Okay, I turned down the street. There was a yard sale. I'm walking around junk. I may have been to those. You're like, are you kidding me? This should have went in the garbage. Like, for real? Like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm walking through here. I'm like, and all of a sudden, I see a tricycle under the table. Now, you know when that happens, your heart leaps. Like, is this for real? Is this happening? So I go up to the table, and I said, is that for sale? And she says, oh, that was my grandchildren. They never used it. No scratches on it. So she says, I said, well, how much is it? Five dollars. Guess what? I had five dollars. I remember taking it out of my purse and paying for it, and I'm carrying this back to the car like, oh, my God. You know that feeling when like, oh, my God, what just happened? What? Oh, my God. And that was a moment that I was learning as a young mom and a young Christian to lean in and start to hear the Spirit of the Lord. There was another time I'm sitting on the couch. We were at Bible school, and we had a two-story townhouse, and the stairs were really steep. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting there, and I, I have this, this feeling, go to the stairs now. So I was trying to learn this, so I get up and I go to the stairs, just as my daughter fell from the top of the stairs, and I caught her in my arms. I was like, those moments are like, do, 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 do. Like, how is this even happening? Like, what, what? And then it was game on for me. You know, when, when you start to learn something and you're like, I'm all in on this. This is the greatest experience I've ever had in my life. I'm going for it with all I got. We are, we're, we're living this. This is a life we're going to live. One day, my husband was driving down the street and he decided to turn on Eminem Road. And as he turned on Eminem Road, he looked over and he said, Lord, if that property ever goes for sale, I want it. We're going to build the church here. Who does that? Spirit of the Lord. Leaning in, leaning in. Are you listening? Leaning in. And every one of us have that opportunity to lean in and hear the voice of the Lord. We can lean in when it comes to our kids. They could be right at the verge of making the biggest mistake of their entire life. And all of a sudden, you're like, I'm calling them. Hey, buddy, it's me. My, 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 my. You know, now they get all creeped out and like, what? And you don't even know. You don't even know, but they know that you just caught them <laughs> about to do something stupid. You don't have to blast them. You don't have to be mad at them. You don't have to, you know, be crucify them. You just know, like, uh, thank you, Lord. 
The, the, the goal is to keep them safe. The goal is to have them be productive adults. That's your goal. And you lean in. As you're raising them, you're leaning in moms. You're leaning in dads. You're raising them. You're raising children that are going to be amazing, amazing people someday. One of, my, one of my verses I like in the Bible is in Genesis. There was a guy named Adam. Anybody remember Adam? He was the first man. One day, God says to Adam, now why? I don't know, but he says, Adam, come here. Lean in a little bit. Everybody lean in. He goes, see over there? That's where the gold is. Now, why is God telling them where gold is? Why not? What if God says to you guys, maybe you're looking to make an investment or something, and God's like, lean in. I'm going to tell you. Invest in this. Invest in that. Do this. It's crazy stuff. A lot of times the world, they're, they're like, how, how are you doing that? It's crazy because the Holy Spirit just kind of like prompts you. Besides saying the Spirit leads us, let me, let me throw out other ways that we could explain this. Did you ever have a gut feeling? Did you ever have an intuition? Did you ever have the heebie-jeebies? You know what they are? Some of you, you're like, what? I'll tell you what they are. The heebie-jeebies are where you get creeped out. Where the hair stands up on the back of your neck and you get that feeling that crawls down your back like something's about to happen. And you're just like, what's, what's going on here? What? I believe, I believe that there's hundreds and thousands of people all around the world that are leaning in and they're protecting millions of people because they're being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. We just don't know what to call it. You could call it whatever you want. Your gut, intuition, uh, the Holy Spirit. I like to give glory to God, so I say the Spirit of the Lord was guiding me. He was leading me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I give credit for that. But not only do you have that seat at the table to be who God says you are, you have the ability to have inside information. And that's crucial right now. That's crucial right now. I was thinking about something. I went into Pastor Mike's bathroom, which used to be Pastor Joe's bathroom, and I looked down at the tile on the floor, and I almost cried. You're like, why would you cry over tile? When we were building the building, we, uh, we kept getting calls from the builder. Uh, Pastor Joe, could we meet? Um, uh, we have a situation. And any time there was a situation, it was thousands of dollars. It wasn't like $100 or whatever. It was thousands of dollars. So we started to um, feel the brunt of, of the building and the weight of what we were building. And I started to pray for different things for the church. I started to pray for curtains. And my husband's like, Lynn, that's the last. We don't need curtains right now. How, how are we going to have a building without curtains? How, how we got to have stuff. Come on, ladies. We got to, you're not going to buy me a house and then we're going to just have nothing. We got to have stuff. So I was like, Lord, I thank you for this stuff. I thank you for it. There was a guy who used to come to our church and he moved away and he called me one day and he said, Miss Lynn, he said, I work for a company that has a warehouse filled with tile. He said, would your church, I know you're building, would you have any need for ceramic tile? Well, hello, yes, I would. <laughs> Thank you very much. He said, all I need you to do is send a couple of guys up here with a truck. Now, mind you, I had a list this long. I'm a list maker. How many of you are list makers? I'm a dream maker. I put all the dreams. This is what I want. And then I check it off. Every time it happens, I'm checking, checking, checking. This guy drives up, picks up all the stuff. And we wanted these mirrors for the ladies' bathroom. And they said, we got a bunch of mirrors. Would you have? Yes, yes. Put them on the truck. Put them on the truck. All this stuff arrived, tile. So I, I set up my whole dining room was Command Central. This is where I was designing everything. And I was like, okay, this is enough tile to tile that bathroom. And that's the only one that has that right there. I think the foyer way 
going outside. There's enough tile here. We can do this. We can do this. As we learn to lean in and allow the Holy Spirit. And as I was looking at that tile this morning, I was reminded of something the Lord said to me. You ready? He said, quit asking me for money. You don't need money. Watch this. Ask me for what you need. Say the need and don't attach the money to it. If I need a dress, I don't need to ask him for $150 to go buy a designer dress somewhere or whatever. I, I need a dress. You understand what I'm saying? We need a tile. I could give a rip if I had to buy it myself. It, I don't care about, it was, we need a tile, not money. That's just a little inside tip I'm just going to throw out at you this morning. First service didn't get it, so you, you guys are, are privileged with that one. But learning to lean in, learning to lean in and allowing the Holy Spirit to just guide you and direct you in every step. I'm going to ask the moms in the room, and I'm going to, please don't think that it's not fair, but if you are a mom in the room and you have children still at home, I'm going to ask you to come to the front. I'm going to pray with you. You still have children at home. The other moms, I'm not, not to be rude or anything, but maybe you've raised your kids, they're older. It's not as crucial. Or... And then I'm going to ask you to do something while you're in the front. I'm going to ask you to lock arms. Not hold hands, lock arms. Yeah, just lock them up. Wow, there's a lot of you. You guys might need to scooch up a little bit. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Lots of you. Wow. The rest of you in the room, I'm going to ask you to stand. I asked you to lock arms instead of hold hands, because holding hands just means I understand. It's going to be okay. But when you're locking arms with somebody, I got you. It's one of those, I got you. Not meaning that everybody in the room is going to call each other. It doesn't mean that spiritually. It's just a spiritual exercise. We got each other. We're going to hook up together, and we're going to see our kids through this. We're going to see our kids be amazing, amazing kids. Are you listening? While Pastor Chris was, was worshiping, I felt this very, very strongly, that there's a mom in here, and I don't know if it's one of your kids or two, but they are really, really going in a wrong direction, like bad. And you have been crying out to the Lord. You've been crying and praying. I want you to know something. God sees that. Let me tell you, the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. The word and the seed that you've planted in them will never return void, never, never. you got to trust the process. A lot of kids run. A lot of kids hide. I will tell you for a fact, after 40 years of being in this church, I've seen kids from this age, they go to college, off they go. This is what I would tell them. I will come to your college and I'm going to spank you. <laughs> if I hear that some professor told you in one semester there is no God, and I've been telling you there's a God since you were five years old, I'm going to spank you. <laughs> but I see them at that age, they go off and do their thing. And you know what I say to them? Have fun. Because you're going to try to hide, you're going to try to run. But the word that is in you will never return void. It will haunt you all the days of your life in a good way. And then they come back and they'd say this, Miss Lynn, I'm back. Of course you are. <laughs> Duh. Like it's like, and you know when they come back? When they decide to settle down. And they found Mrs. Wright, Mr. Wright. And they're going to start their little family. And they say, I'd like to raise them in church. Of course you would. So I'm going to encourage you, just hang on. Just hang on. Just hang on. 
As you guys are out there, I want you to reach your hands out to these moms. Holy Spirit, I thank you. I thank you that you see each one of these moms that are represented here this morning. That they have their kids, and I know they're holding them close to their heart. They're praying for them. They're, they're encouraging them. And I pray, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, that you teach each and every mom to lean in, that they will know how to deal with each one of their children individually and help them to grow and be the men and the women that you created them to be. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for encouraging them. Thank you that they're in a good church where they can learn the living word of God. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for your presence in this place right now. I want you to just give each, each mom, just give your arms a little squeeze. Just like tighten up just a little bit like, we got this. We got this. We got this. And if you're going through something with your children, I ask you to reach out to one of the prayer counselors here at the church. Reach out to somebody. Get somebody else to pray with you for them. Get their name blasted everywhere in, in the realm of the Spirit so that, so that the Holy Spirit can just begin to move in their lives. Are you listening to me? As we close this morning, moms, you can just stay right there just a minute. There's a confession I want us to say. And this, this goes for all of us. We're going to say this real, real slow this morning. And I want to encourage you. You have a seat at the table. Learn who you are. Mephibosheth had to learn who he was. He was not this poor kid from Lodabar. He was the grandson of a king. And you've got to learn who you are. You need to learn scripture. Memorize the word of the living God. Get that down inside of you. Let's say this together. We're going to say it slow. I am a child of the Most High God. I am the head and not the tail, never beneath. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Everything I set my hands to prospers and is successful. I am seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus I have a seat at the table. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching today's message. My name is Pastor John Mark. And if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. We want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm going to ask you to do is to take your next step in your journey. We'd love to help you do that. And you can head over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started.